Hello and thank you for joining me today. For those that are returning, I'm sure that you may have noticed I haven't posted any videos in the last couple of months and I certainly do apologize for that. I'm currently in a transition phase in my life. I'm looking for my forever home and my forever home is going to have a nice big garage so I can continue to make videos. I do enjoy doing that as a hobby and I enjoy helping people out and answering questions about the problems that they're having with their cars. Now, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please be sure to go check out my other content. I have several repair videos up there, mostly covering Hondas, the Civics, and an Accord, and uh, see if any of those might help you out. I would certainly appreciate that. Now, even though I haven't posted any videos in a while, I do keep up with the channel. I keep up with the comments. I try to answer all the questions that are sent my way. And part of that is also looking at the analytics and statistics for the site. And I saw that I'm at the 3,000 subscriber mark. So that's kind of humbling. I thought, never thought in a million years that I would make it that high up in the uh, YouTube world. But for each and every one of, the, of you that have subscribed, I certainly appreciate that. Now today we're going to be talking about the knock sensor that's in my 2000 Honda Accord. Even though I'm going to use the Accord as the example, this is going to be relevant to any car that has this style knock sensor installed in it. So hopefully you'll be able to get a little information out of this and it's going to help you in understanding exactly what a knock sensor is, uh, how it works, and why it's needed. Now to begin that conversation, we're going to need to talk about what is detonation or pinging and how that occurs inside of your engine. and we get on to what the knock sensor is and exactly how that works. Now to do that, I made a little animation back here, it's very crude, but I think they get the point across. So we're gonna switch off of the uh, stand and I'm gonna show you exactly what we're talking about. All right, gentlemen, what I've done is I've created a uh, animation here to show you how the piston travel is measured in rotation, whereas it starts at top dead center is considered zero degrees. And as the piston moves through its um, up and down travel when it gets to the bottom dead center position that's considered 180 degrees and as the piston travels back up in the cylinder bore and its compression stroke back to zero degrees. You can kind of think of that as how uh, as the crank is rotating that that is what is actually being measured and the piston moves up and down in correlation to that. Now to the animation I'm going to add the spark that is going to ignite your uh, fuel air mixture so as the piston goes down, bottom dead center again, 180. It's coming up on its compression stroke. And just before the piston reaches top dead center, that is when your spark plug fires. Uh, this is to make sure that you're getting the full, uh, it takes time for gas to burn. That's what octane does. It actually slows down the burn of your gas. So when the piston is before top dead center is when it's gonna fire. Now in this animation, I'm showing before top dead center at idle is going to be seven degrees when the piston fires. That might be actually a little bit low. I think the uh, Accord that I did most of my testing on fires about 14 degrees before top dead center at idle. So as you accelerate the and add more load to the engine, the timing advance is going to increase. I believe on the Accord again, it, go, it can go all the way up to around 30 degrees before top dead center before it will fire. Uh, anything after that or, or shorter than that is probably not safe for the engine. When you're dealing with these uh, high performance uh, race cars, uh, high compression, they have to use high octane to slow down the burn and then they run a pretty extreme uh, timing advance. Now in this animation, I'm gonna show you what happens when detonation occurs. And by detonation, I mean knocking, uh, pinging, spark knock, anything that you wanna call it like that. So as the piston is coming around uh, through the rotation again, as it's coming back up to where it's supposed to fire, detonation will can occur before the spark plug actually ignites the fuel air mixture. Uh, when this occurs, the, the uh, gases uh, expand before the piston has reached top dead center, and it's actually pushing against the piston as it's trying to complete its upward stroke inside of the engine. This is what causes the pinging or knocking, or back in the old days when you would turn a car off, uh, some of those older cars would cheap gas in them, and they would sit there and continue to, to run and kind of clonk a little bit. It's because the engine is actually firing without the spark because either, A, there's something wrong with it, there's, it's, it's running hot, or it's cheap gas. And that's very detrimental to an engine, so that is why modern cars come equipped with a knock sensor. So there you have it. I hope that animation helped you to understand a little bit better about uh, detonation, pre-detonation, pinging, spark knock, whatever you want to call it. 
So since that can't hurt the engine, modern cars do come with a, what we've been talking about, a knock sensor. All this is, it has one connection on the inside of it, and this end bolts into your engine block as if it was uh, just a bolt. There's no port or anything. And it's only designed to detect this, the ping or knock inside of the engine. Uh, when that happens, it sends a harmonic or through the engine that this is able to detect. And how it does that is inside of this is what's known as a piezoelectric crystal. And that's just a fancy way of saying that when it actually feels an impact, the crystal that is inside of this creates voltage on the millivolt level. Uh, when that's strong enough, the sender, the unit sends the information to the computer that there's an electrical signal. And what your computer does at that point is put your car into a kind of a limp mode. It'll um, take it'll take spark advance out of the engine. So if you're running like under full load, you're at 30 degrees spark advance. Uh, the computer's requesting that. It sees that it's detecting a knock inside of the engine. It takes timing out. It may back it down to 10, 15, something like that. I couldn't tell you the exact numbers. So the main thing to take away from that is that if you have a check engine light with the code of P0325 and you look that up and it says knock sensor, that does not mean that your engine is knocking. What it means is that the sensor has failed a test that the uh, computer is, is thrown at it and the car goes into kind of a limp mode uh, by default, it just automatically takes the timing out of the engine. You may notice a problem with your gas mileage or the car seems a little bit sluggish. It's not quite as peppy on the, on the acceleration. So that just means that the sensor needs to be changed. Now, like I said before, most modern cars do have this safety feature built into them in one way or another. I'm just showing you the way that Honda does it with that particular knock sensor that I just showed you. Now, if you're running one of the vintage Hondas, uh, we'll say the 90s to 2000s, thousand uh, models in that area then it's going to be that bolt that's knock sensor bolted inside of your engine somewhere it's usually it's usually on the exhaust side up close to the head uh, on the 2000 Honda Accord it's on the back of the engine and I'm going to show you some footage here in a minute of exactly where it's at and how to get that out uh, before I get to that footage I will say that I filmed it uh, quite a few months ago and I've since sold that car believe it or not my baby is gone uh, it's been sitting for a while uh, the price of, uh, of good used cars has skyrocketed so much I just I didn't have any reason to have it right now I pretty much finished everything I've been doing to it so that went on the market sold pretty quick and a uh, young man bought it and I hope he's going to be happy with it. So I am going to go to that footage now and show you where the knock sensor is at and how you can get to it and get it out. It, it, you're going to require, I believe it's a 24 millimeter deep well socket because you're going to have to, when it's actually in the engine, you're going to have to get the socket over the outside of it to grab the uh, nut part of it. So we'll go to that and I'll uh, come back and finish this up. Okay, so uh, with all that being said, where is the knock sensor on your engine? Uh, the, you should look that up, Google that information, you should be able to find it no problem. Now, if you're dealing with one of these uh, vintage of Hondas, they do put the knock sensor on the back of the engine, just underneath the intake manifold. So if we look here in the back, get a light, try to show you. We're gonna move in. Here you have your intake manifold, uh, your fuel rail here and you see your intake runners underneath it. Your knock sensor is underneath the intake manifold in this area right here. The only way you can get to it, uh, I guess there might be a chance you could get your arms back behind here and, and do that, but you need to get up underneath the car and, and, and jack it up as high as you can to show what we got. Okay, so here I am laying up underneath the car. This is the back of the engine. Of course, here's your oil filter to give you some bearing. If you go above the oil filter, you have your water tube here that runs across and then above that is your knock sensor so all we're going to do is right this connector right here i'm very sorry if the camera is not uh picking this up as well as i'd hoped it would but you can see it has the green backing on it it's got this little clip connector on it so we're going to squeeze and pull that off and that is our knock sensor so i'm not going to be able to do this on camera but we're going to put that 24 millimeter uh socket on that and we're going to get our wrench up there and just get it cracked loose after it's loose you should be able to spin it out with your fingers i'm just not going to be able to do this and film it at the same time so go ahead and loosen that up i'll come back when i'm ready to uh, spin it out with my fingers all right i've got that broke loose now and we're going to go ahead and back that out
and there you have it one bad knock sensor i will say also that this um you, that your water tube could get in the way if you're using an impact socket that's thicker than a regular chrome socket i had to uh do a little bumping and a little massaging to get it to go past the uh, tube because the tube comes up and it's very close to the um the nut that's on the back of this so i'm going to thread the new one in we're going to go ahead and tighten it down and get this thing back running and again this is one of those things you're going to have to, to probably feel for it just find the uh the uh, threaded port with your finger get this starting and run it down as far as you can with just your fingers And there you have it. I'm going to uh, put my socket in back on that, give that about a half a turn to the right. It, this does not to be gorilla fisted on, just no good and snug. And then we're going to put our connector back on it after I do that. See you back up top. So there you have it. I hope that you found that information useful. If so, please be sure to leave a like, comment on the video. That's going to help me greatly with the uh, YouTube algorithm. And we'll see what happens if I can get up to 5,000 uh, subscriptions. That would be great. In the meantime, thank you each and every one for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.